Disclaimer. In this video, I refer to the individual at question as a male. I've come to find that they are non-binary and wanted to apologize that I didn't know this sooner. Please know that I did not mean to misgender them, and please know that within my own statements when I refer to he, I intentionally mean they, them. Thank you for your understanding. Hello everybody, my name is Hardy Smarty, and welcome back to the channel. I hope you've all been well, and today I want to talk about the recent allegations against Adam or Sky Does Minecraft. This video will be discussing the experiences of working with Sky from the famous films Miss Sand, Dear Pal Ross, and Skelly. They will all be linked in the description. Gizzy Gaz's experience will not be discussed, but it is linked in the description as well. This video will be too long if I put everyone's experience into it. If this video does well, maybe I'll do a part two. Before we get into the situation, I have a quick disclaimer. Please do not send hate to Adam. This is more of a reflection video and is being produced as commentary, not to spread hate in any way. To repeat, please do not go after any names mentioned in this video. Elisa, Elizabeth, Adam, etc. I don't want no comments like, oh Hardy, you're just being a meanie. No, no I am not, okay? Let's go. I know there will be timestamp comments, I know, I know you guys want to skip my lovely intros that I work hard on, I get it. Trigger warning as well, there's mentions of very, very bad mental health states, sui, depression, manipulation, verbal abuse, neglect of children, etc. Please feel free to exit this video if you're not comfortable with this, but please don't leave just because you don't want to hear the truth. Thanks. You weren't living in 2013 if you didn't run home to watch Sky Does Minecraft play modded cops and robbers. Friends of mine watched him as kids, I watched him, I'm sure some of you did too. He dominated the Minecraft scene in 2013, when Minecraft was just beginning to boom. However, eight years have come and gone, people change. Unfortunately, our idols do too. In 2017, there was a drama alert episode with Adam and Keem, where they addressed the drama with Adam and his ex, Elisa, which had to do with some diss tracks, Elisa being in KSI's video, and all that other stuff that is irrelevant right now. But don't tell me Ben Denis didn't go hard though. I love that diss track, Adam. He broke down in the Keem interview because he longed to see his son. Anyway, this was years ago now, not that important. But another ex of Adam's has come forward with allegations against him. So that's why we're here today. From what I know, Elizabeth is an ex of Adam's who, or was, I don't know, carrying his child and is no longer with him. Adam now has a different partner, I guess. Anyway, she came forward with allegations against Adam related to physical and verbal abuse, substance abuse of the devil's lettuce, and claims he led her to try and attempt not aliving. I understand these are heavy allegations to make against somebody, especially someone in the public eye, their public being younger kids, or those who originally watched him. Nevertheless, screenshots were provided as well as text messages, voice memos, videos, and documentation. I will leave a link in the description to where all the screenshots can be found. Since these allegations arose, various creators are expressing their own experiences with Adam. And there's lots of not good stuff. The following statement is from Brian or The Famous Films, trigger warning for sexual assault and manipulation. Remember back in June of 2020 when everyone came out about their sexual assault stories? And I also came out of mine and I mentioned a Minecraft YouTuber in my third story, but never mentioned a name? Story 3's mentioned influential Minecraft YouTuber in my tweet long is about Adam slash guy slash net nobody. It all started when this person said they were going to visit Las Vegas in a few months and wanted to hang. Fast forward, we made plans to go out that night karaoke along with their date they had at the time. We had a great time singing, drinking, and talking during karaoke. After all that was done, this person was very intoxicated. Not as much as I was and we were waiting for an Uber to take them back to their hotel and then take me back to my house. We were just hanging around and he was making out with his date and me on my phone and then proceeded to tell me randomly how he's kissed other guys that I also knew in the space, naming them off and I was confused and then proceeded to grab my cheeks and pull me in for a kiss. At the time, this was brushed off as a joke and I laughed as I remembered including the fact that their date looked also confused by the action and all because everything was brushed off as a joke. That situation kept looping in my head all the time after that year and I never tried to think anything about it but honestly I never said it was okay to do that even if it was for a joke especially in front of the other person you're clearly dating like what during that time I was also struggling with my sexuality and that didn't help either it was never okay for them to do that whatsoever 
quick pause. This is a bit worded differently, so I apologize if I like if the grammar doesn't make sense. This person also gave me promising hopes about changing my life for the better and manipulated me into thinking that because of their position and power in the industry, which led me into a deep depression at one point which led me to suey thoughts. This person has manipulated so many people and has been in many scandals before and people still are friends with them and continue to support him. They hurt a lot of people. I had looked up to this person like a big brother influencer because of how caring they were towards me. I was friends with this person for a long time thinking they were a good person to me and to the others because of the position they had. End tweet. Brian's tweet will be linked in my description as well. Please go support him. So that was horrible. Um, I've discussed commissions with Brian before. This is sick and I'm really uncomfortable with knowing this knowledge now. It was not right of Adam to pursue Brian at all, especially since consent was clearly not addressed. I don't get how this is a joke either. It's uncomfortable and gross and not really funny. Nonetheless, there's other experiences we will be looking into today. That's Max's, Ross's, and Skelly's. Myth Zan, or Max, was another content creator who often was in collaboration with Adam. He follows me on Twitter, by the way. Just wanted to put that out there. Max worked at Sky Media as an editor and had his shtick as Mad Max when the camera was rolling. He revealed on a stream that it was a made-up character, which really made me sad, and often doesn't talk about the issues when he worked with Adam. We're going to read over a fraction of his experiences now. Hang tight, everyone. The following is a statement from Myth Zan. A link to the Twitter longer will be in my description. In 2015, I was employed by Sky Media to be a video editor. It was supposed to be a temporary position while I transitioned over to talent within the first couple of months, but was constantly pushed back for over a year. I was strung along for months to not create content or upload anything on my channel until my channel was purchased by the company. At the time, the Miss Zan name was completely worthless. But it was still a name I had created myself since 2005 and wanted to keep it no matter what. When I was finally given a contract to sign and sell my channel, the offer was $5,000. A one year non-compete, no social media presence for a year if I left. Complete loss of any right to the name Mythzan and a bunch of other legal mumbo jumbo that I did not agree with and was advised by several third parties not to sign. After over a year of waiting and being strung along, I decided to quit once I was handed such a shitty deal. Ross ended up quitting for separate reasons unrelated to mine, but we were always grouped together because we quit around the same time. It's assumed I was finally given a contract because Ross was already quitting at that point. The office had its fair share of good moments, but they sure as hell did not outweigh the bad. Tim, the head editor of the office, was vilified to a completely unjustifiable reasoning. He was treated horribly, and due to my loyalty to the CEO of the company, I had no reason to mistrust what they were saying about Tim, and also had a hand in treating him badly. I deeply regret how I treated him, and will never forgive myself for being so blind to the situation. It's not my place to tell Tim's story, but everything Tim has tweeted thus far has been completely truthful. Along with Tim's work hours, mine were no better. In order for me to actually be a part of the content recording, I had to show up to the office every day around 4 to 6 a.m. I have worked far more overtime than I should have realized and ended up having to work close to 15 to 17 hour work days. We never had a strict schedule to work with because sometimes the CEO would never show up to work, so we had to work around how they were feeling. At the time, we had an office manager who was also vilified by the CEO and were told not to listen to him no matter what because, in reality, they were actually trying to make the CEO do their job. The working environment of the offices was disgusting, unprofessional, and I'm surprised I stayed as long as I did. I felt brainwashed. Once I quit the offices, I decided to begin uploading content to my own channel and do what I always wanted to do. As time began to pass, Ross got a call one night from the CEO asking why Tim was tweeting about him. He wasn't, but assumed he was because the CEO was always paranoid. During that phone call, the CEO lashed out at Ross, saying how I was brainwashing Ross and how I was a horrible friend to him and Ross quitting was my fault. I was the only person in my house who was still defending him before that. After hearing that I blocked them on Twitter for the first time, just so I could finally be done with dealing with everything, once the CEO learned that I blocked him, they began the first wave of harassment tweeting horrible lies about me periscoping streams, and coming up with fabricated stories of stuff I never did. This is only scratching the surface. On my birthday of November 2016, Scarce picked up the story and echoed the lies told about me and even more false shit, vilifying me. 
This is where I began the constant harassment from fans who believed the CEO to a terrifying degree. I received death threats, name calling, bullying of all sorts, I even recall one person sending me a video of them burning my photo. In 2017, I felt the pressure of YouTube at full force and decided it would be much safer position if I got another job as an editor. That's when I started working for Jess or Aphmau. When the CEO found out about this, they began constantly harassing me over and over, day after day on Twitter, even though I had not spoken to them in over a year. This put me in a terrible mental state to where I even contemplated Sui to make it all stop. This is only a fraction of the stuff I went through, but it happened so long ago that I, that I still to this day have most of it blocked out. I hate talking about it. I hate talking about them and I hate hearing people who I even associate with justifying the CEO's actions to me. The amount of people who know about their actions and continue to work with them after so long is disgusting. I'm seeing them reach out now and even try to paint the CEO in a bad light only now because it benefits them. This person had so much power could ever begin to realize and to see them garner so much support every day because they made quirky Minecraft videos and played off their fans' nostalgia is disheartening, to say the least. This is far from over. I'm done hiding and being scared every day. One of the reasons I never spoke out is because, and has always stuck with me, is the CEO once told me, no matter if I'm wrong, I will bleed you dry in court from lawyer fees and you will have nothing. In the end, I'm glad people are listening now. End of the tweet. This is horrible. I don't believe it's right for creators to sign their users over to a company for money. I get security, but that's ridiculous. As well as harassing a former employee and a friend. When an employee quits, the boss or manager really shouldn't continue bashing them. It's unprofessional and really fucked up. Um, and the threats, that's also really not cool. Can you really, like, can you guys imagine Sky saying that? Like him telling you directly that he will leave you broke and will get away with it because he has money and the influence of a supportive audience? Completely sick, and that's all I have to say about that. Next, we will be taking a look at Ross's perspective. Previously house owner, Ross was often in Sky's content. He was in Roommates, Do Not Laugh, Hide and Seek, and was a member of Sky Media along with Max. Ross played the role of a slow, dumb, childish sort of character when filming content. Another sort of negative role that would put attention on Adam as a main character. Thinking about it now, characters like Mad Max and Ross and Barney as well were used to make Adam look more normal or like the main character. Max was angry and aggressive. Ross was sort of random. Same with Barney. I remember they talking about dirt all the time. I don't get it, but sure. Back to Ross though. Ross moved to Washington to work for Sky Media because Adam had promised him and Max as well as other creators that joining Sky Media would allow him to pursue his dreams alongside Adam. After he left Sky Media, Adam wanted him back for the roommates reboot. When Ross said he was unsure if he could, Adam told him he was going to do it either way. He gave Ross no time to heal after leaving and immediately had him working again. The following is your pal Ross's experience with Adam. Trigger warning of course. I've been getting a lot of messages about Adam lately, and I just wanted to say, a lot has happened, and I was hurt for a long time over it. I wanted to leave Sky Media because I didn't like that I did not have full creative control over myself. I did not have full creative control because Adam had purchased my channel from me and had me manage the channel as my job. When I wanted to leave my job at Sky Media, I was gi given the option to purchase the house owner channel back from Adam or create an entirely new online persona. I personally did not agree with the amount being asked for because I felt the value of the channel was not the name house owner, but me as a person, and thus I created the persona of your pal Ross. After this, we had tried to stay friends and not let it grow between us, though losing the channel I had originally created as a kid really sucked, especially watching it become couch potatoes and then into clever pride. I felt like things went the most downhill during Vision Squad. Vision Squad was toted as a new Team Crafted too, with extra members even using the old Team Crafted channel. During a Vision Squad recording session, Adam asked me about a vague tweet my roommate Tim had made that was in reference to feeling like PewDiePie's content at the time was burnt out. I had told him to just let it be because I thought that Tim's thoughts on PewDiePie's didn't concern him. This eventually somehow spiraled into an all-out argument about how he believed my other roommate Miss Anne was manipulating me and that he was the reason why I was so against Adam, which is entirely false, he was never manipulating me in any way. I told Miss Zan about what Adam had said about him, he broke down and blocked Adam because of it. After that, I decided I wanted nothing to do with Adam. I was not a fan of how he treated people, 
and wanted to just be left alone from all the drama. I blocked him too. For years after that, I've never been able to find my peace. I've gotten harassed and targeted by his fans, both at their own will and at the word of Adam. Years after the situation had taken place, a lot of the drama arose from the spread of misinformation about the entire situation, and both his fans and him harassing myself and Mythsan, painting us in a negative light with no room to defend ourselves, he had threatened to bleed us dry in court in the past if we had ever tried to speak out about our time with him. I moved on, and I'm happy where I'm creating my own content as your pal Ross, but it's something and someone I never want to go back to. Please respect that and let everyone be. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to get back to playing Animal Crossing New Horizons on my Nintendo Switch. Again, with the threats, it's horrible to see Ross's original channel was given to other creators, like new offices. I don't get- I don't like that. A channel should be one's own, especially when your channel was one that you made as a young person. I don't understand why Adam seems to start drama out of nothing. I read over Gizzy's statement and that's a lot of his experiences. Adam makes drama worse. And people turn against those the drama is with because Adam's influence is greater. Skelly or Austin is the final victim we will be looking at for today. Austin became friends with Adam when he attempted to reboot his channel after quitting Minecraft content altogether. He was invited to play and became a member of the behind the scenes group that would keep Adam in check so he didn't jeopardize his career. There was a half-hearted joke as well. They referred to Austin as damage control. The following is Skelly's experience with Adam. And again, trigger warning. Number 1. Manipulation Unfortunately, like many others, I faced my fair share of abusive, manipulative people. I know what it looks like when someone used manipulative tactics to get people to do what the abuser wants. And boy, did I see lots of that. If there was a checkbox with manipulative slash mentally abusive tactics and behaviors, Adam could have easily hit each box by the end of the day. Anyone and everyone involved with them in ways was inevitably at risk of falling victim to their tactics. But you're here for my side, so let me share what they'd like to try on me. Adam told me many times about how he saw me as a successor, calling me things like Sky 2, Cain, Son of Adam in the Bible, the next sky, etc. To my knowledge, but not to my surprise, they didn't expect the same enthusiasm for me to other people, because it was a tool for me, a title that they knew I valued. They would suggest I do things I wasn't comfortable with, as much as I'd like to let you all know I'm not comfortable discussing all that. And when those things were rejected, I was told things like, that's not very sky of you, and maybe I was wrong about you as an attempt to make me earn my title by doing what they wanted from me. I'm of course not the only person he manipulated at all, but those are not my stories to tell. Number two, irresponsibility. As I've stated before, Adam and I are both parents. Well, I'm a parent and they happen to be biologically related to two children, but that's besides the point. On a few times I've been over to their house, their son was also home to visit. A child needs care from their parent, so what did they do? Adam did the bare minimum if that, and then left to his room. You want to know who watched Mason? Me. Who got him snacks? Me. Who got games on and watched TV with him? Me. Childcare is nothing new to me, and never a bother, so I don't want this to sound like Mason was a burden left on me. He's honestly one of the sweetest souls I've met, and I loved kicking it with him. However, Adam's very apparent lack of responsibility and care really shined through to me that day and angered me to my core. I just couldn't wrap my head around it. Then they'd compare us as equals and preach online of how they're such an amazing person. It made me sick to my stomach. And then there was poor Albert. Adam's dog Albert was often fed things the dog really shouldn't be eating. Candy, junk food, sweet drinks, etc. It was clear by his behavior, and to be frank, his farts, just how badly he was nourished. And whenever he would do things a poorly trained pup would do, he would be thrown outside in the cold rain. Adam is not fit to be a pet owner whatsoever. On relationships, of any kind for that matter, they lack the responsibility to properly care for another person in their life. Friends, family, partners, you name it. They couldn't even take care of themselves. How should they be expected to take care of others? And I don't just mean they're neglectful, I mean downright hurtful. I've never met a single person that he showed true love to, the way you do when you truly care for someone. They could snap and hurt you at the toss of a dime with no remorse. He genuinely is not fit for relations of any kind. If they were constantly nice to you, you either 1. weren't close enough with them, 2. constantly did what they wanted of you, 3. 
you got lucky. I both envy you and feel relief for you. When it came to their career, they were they were never the one to take action. The team I was involved with, as well as Liz, did everything except be Adam. We scheduled his activities, got him to wake up and work, contacted business opportunities, coordinated collaborations, and gave whatever we could to settle his community while he went MIA. The amount of utter stress some of us went through to keep him afloat and keep his fans happy. They're lucky we were all selfless as we were. No one should be expected to go through the hoops we jumped in order to save a career that arguably wasn't even his doing anymore. Number three, substance abuse. I want to preface that by saying addiction is a serious matter, I'll never blame anyone for being addicted to a substance of any kind. However, addiction does not excuse bad actions and Adam's story with the substance abuse isn't just a matter of fighting addiction. Adam would talk to us of so many substances that at this point I don't even remember them all. But for this, I'm going to be talking about his use of shrooms specifically, because that's enough to get my point across. Adam would dose shrooms nearly every day. Sometimes he'd actually take a break, but sometimes he would say he's taking a break, putting a stop to it, but in reality he was doing it, still. They only ever lied about stopping shrooms to get what they wanted. They would believe delusions and hallucinations they'd see while on shrooms, and when you tried to tell them that they were, those things weren't true, they'd just tell you that you were crazy and unintelligent for not being woke enough to understand. They'd often pressure people into dosing with him, including myself. I never gave in, but they had tried on multiple occasions. 4. Misc I don't exactly have enough points for these specific things to get the whole topic written out, so I'm just going to list a couple of additional things that they've done. They've attempted a few non-consensual advances with me while under the influence. They've video called me on multiple occasions with nothing but underwear on, once naked in the bathroom. I didn't see anything, but still weird. They once implied that they were godlike being and that humanity as a whole was below them. Constantly villainized people, currently, and no longer involved in his life. Example, Post Malone is the Antichrist. Example, Teen Crafted members are diagnosed psychopaths. Mason's mom has devil blood, is a snake woman, etc. Told me, no matter how much good she did for them, that Liz was terrible and that they feel no remorse doing things like cheating and admitting multiple times that they're abusive acts towards her. Then implied he'd cheat on her with me, possibly as a joke, but still not okay. Showed me pictures of a homunculus they birthed, which was clearly, oh, that's not cool. Was convinced I was an elemental bender, like me, they said, and I got genuinely mad. When I was denied that it was true, they threatened to bloodbend my heart if I tried hiding my abilities from them again. Then later profusely apologized on call the next day, probably in fear I'd tell someone. Promised pay for my work over and over, spoiler alert, I was never paid a dime. Told me to name my son after them, then attempted to guilt trip me when I denied. Got upset with me because they believed that I was stealing their energy from their dream self to relieve my insomnia. Okay. There's a few more things they've done. But for my own safety and mental health, I don't feel comfortable sharing those. I'm not financially stable enough to risk a court case, and I'm already at risk of taking heat from their fans as is. I'm thankful you took the time to see my point of view on this matter. A few last notes. Yes, Adam is very mentally ill. They need help, but they'll dodge as much as they can. And try convincing them to get help will get you nowhere. At this point, it's best for you to keep your distance from them and allow them to do it themselves. No, Adam's mental illness does not excuse any of his behavior. Many, many people deal with various forms of mental illness in their everyday lives and it does not stop them from not being a scummy person if they truly care to not be a scummy person. There are too many people affected to this day by his actions to even count. Adam doesn't deserve a platform where they can go to harm more people. This is the end of their presence online. Do not for any reason attempt to approach Adam about anything at all you're putting yourself at risk. Finally, Adam has done treacherous things. However, that does not, in any circumstance, warrant you sending them death threats. I don't tolerate that at all. Stop supporting them, support their victims, and leave it at that. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Skelly slash Austin. That was horrible. I'm surprised Adam has visors, but with the allegations and evidence, I see why. When he slips up and people have proof, it's not very good for him. I'm genuinely concerned at the lack of responsibility for his son. 
Years ago, he was breaking down just to be able to see Mason, and he now won't parent him. However, this is just going off of other experiences. I don't know what goes down in Adam's home, but bringing to light that Adam shouldn't be contact was a good thing to add on Skelly's half. People, especially kids, will want to reach out to Adam, which isn't good. Not to mention he is someone with lots of influence and is an idol for many people. And that's coming from me as well. Attempting to help him would only bring harm to you because you can't. And because he's manipulative. Adam has to want to get help. If he doesn't, that's on him, not anybody else. Nobody else is going to save him. He has to save himself when he's ready. So like I mentioned, please do not try to reach out. With all of this said, thank you all for tuning into this video. I think it's really important that the victims' voices are heard and that people know the situation. All Twitter threads I've referred to will be put in the description. I'm going to try, probably not, but we'll see, to put timestamps for each creator. You guys should see the script for this. Lots of notes and writing. I hope this info has been found useful to you all. I hope you're all doing good and I missed all of you. Real quick, did you guys see the hint I threw in about who I'll be talking about next? Better go find that. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys all in the next one.